The Righteousness and Loss of Job. In this story, we dive into the poetic story of Job. We learn about the cosmic dialogue between God and the enemy. God boasts of the righteousness of a man named Job. Job was a man of pure heart and noble intention. He walked blameless before God and his family. His character would soon be tested to prove to all mankind that it is possible to persevere despite gargantuan loss, inspired by the book of Job. The ancient land of Uz was a blossoming and blessed country. Before the ages of kings and conquests, a man named Job dwelled in the land peacefully with his family. Job was a man of noble character and pure heart. He was wise in all his dealings and raised his family with love, affection, and devotion. He lived in Uz with his wife, seven sons, and three daughters. Together with his servants, they cared for his 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 oxen, and 500 donkeys. Each night, the family would hold a feast and laugh with each other in joy. Job was a truly blessed man and made sacrifices for his family every morning. Job would continually seek God in the cool of the morning, and the two of them were close in all his ways. In a different form of space and time, near the shining presence of the Almighty, the accuser, Satan, appeared before the Lord. From where have you come? God asked. The two did not stand as equals. Satan was allowed to live, but only under the permission of God. I have traveled to and fro on the earth, seeking who may be led astray, Satan said. His tone was slithery, and his countenance was bitter. He looked at God with equal reverence and hatred. The Lord spoke, saying, Have you seen my servant Job? There is none like him. He fears me, turns away from evil, and walks blamelessly before his peers. God's voice was elated with pride as he spoke of his beloved Job. It made Satan writhe where he stood. You coddle Job like an infant, Satan snapped. There is a hedge of protection over him miles wide. You blessed his work, his possessions, and his family. Take it away from him, and I promise he will curse you. God's confidence in Job was unwavering. Do what you will to him. I give you permission. Only do not harm him. So Satan departed from the presence of the Lord to descend upon Job like a whirlwind. The day was drawing to a close, and the sun was setting over the land of Uz. The warm summer breeze trickled in through the home of Job's oldest son. The entire family was eating together, enjoying music and laughter. The revelry continued, and the sound of instruments and conversation drowned out the noise of plunder happening a few hundred yards away. In Job's fields, a neighboring village swooped in and raided the livestock and killed the servants with the edge of their swords. The bellows of stolen livestock and swords being driven through servants' chests were drowned out by Job's laughter. A servant came to tell Job of all that was taking place, so Job left with his servant to go to the barn. As they were running, another servant came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven. Your sheep and servants were consumed in the pasture by a great wildfire. Job's mind was beginning to unravel. He began to run towards the pastures, where he heard a clamoring in the distance. My lord! one of his servants yelled. The servant was running from the western edge of Job's property. He fell at Job's feet out of breath, saying, The Chaldeans are here! They have made a raid on your camels! I am the only servant to survive! What is happening? Job thought to himself. He paused for a moment, and the eastern winds began to rage. Job could barely stand upright. The wind howled violently, and Job and his servants ducked for cover under a crack in the hill near the pastures. Job heard a mighty crash in the distance, followed by screaming. Then, just as quickly as the wind had come, it vanished. Job could hear one single faint scream in the distance. He and his servants looked up from under the rocks to see another servant running towards them. Job knew in his heart what the man was going to say. Job fell to his knees as the servant grew closer. Everything slowed down for a moment. 
The servant's voice was muffled in his ear. Lord! Job did not respond. My lord! The servant yelled again. Job looked up. A great wind just came in from the wilderness. It must have toppled a beam in your son's house. I am sorry, but they are all gone. Job did not respond to his servant. Instead, he walked away back towards his home. He walked a few hundred yards, then fell onto his knees again. Job's tears released like a dam breaking. He yelled, tore his shirt, and drove his face into the ground. Job was weeping, but there was no bitterness behind his tears. His face lifted towards heaven as he said, I came to this world with nothing. Naked, naked I shall return. The Lord gave, and now the Lord has taken away. Blessed be your mighty name, O God. Job stretched his arms to heaven. His tears streamed down his face as he praised God. Job's wife watched him from a distance from their home, stewing in grief and bitterness. She hated him for his joy. Job's joy was complete in God. However, he was not without grief. Job felt the loss deeply, and his heart was shattered into millions of pieces. The next day, Job stood over the wreckage of his children. Ash from the burnt fields made the sky dark. His family, riches, and property was destroyed. Dried tears and dirt caked his face as he stared at his dead children. Job resolved in his heart to not blame God, rather press into him. His faith would be tested even further.